By now, you're probably getting a little bit tired of me reminding you that you should take the greatest common factor out of any polynomial before you um, count the number of terms and decide what you're going to do with that. But again, the broken record in me has to keep going and saying, any problem that you're getting ready to factor, if there's a greatest co uh, common factor, you need to take that out first. That's what's the case with our, with our first problem here. The greatest common factor in these three terms is a factor of y. You must take that out first. Please don't try to do two steps at once. Just get the greatest common factor out. So I'll need a y squared here because y times y squared is that y cubed. And then I'll need a minus 4y and then finally a minus 45. Then you'll step back and say to yourself, oh yeah, if this is a trinomial, and in this particular case I have a 1 in front of the squared term, if I can find two numbers that multiply together to be a negative 45 and add to be a negative 4, then I can factor this some more. So I personally might go ahead and write down my two sets of parentheses and put the y in the front of each one of these. And I'd say to myself, huh, if these two numbers are going to multiply to be a negative 45, one's got to be positive, one's got to be negative. In my mind, the first thing that comes to my, my mind for product is 45 is 5 times 9. Yes, there's 1 times 45, and there's 3 times 15, but it's kind of what comes to my mind. If that happens to be the case for you, 5 times 9, and then you say, ooh, different signs. They have to add to be 4. 5 and 9, yeah, they're going to subtract. So I'm going to make the 9 have the minus sign. The 5 have the plus sign. So that those two values add to be that minus 4. And I could FOIL this out and check it and see if I'm correct. I am. Whatever you do, when you take the greatest common factor out first, in your final answer you have to bring that common factor down and write it as well. Or type it into the computer if you're doing problems online. Let's do another one with the greatest common factor. Four x squared plus forty x plus one hundred. So again, look for that before you go do anything. And in this particular problem, a four can be factored out of every one of those terms. So I'll have a four times. Again, just do this. Just get out the four out of every one of those. So I need an x squared here. I need a ten x right here because four times ten x is forty x. And then finally. I need a 25. So again, as you're getting better and better and better at this, and you've got a trinomial with a 1 in front of the x squared term, if you can think of two numbers that multiply to be 25, hmm, 5 times 5, and add to be 10, 5 plus 5, then you can go ahead and not bother with the tables, but tell yourself that you're going to need a 5 and a 5, because their product is 25, and a 5 and a 5, because their sum is 10. Don't forget the 4. Don't forget to bring that down. And if you're binom binomials, if you ever have matching or an identical set, you may, if you'd like, whether it's handwritten or if you were to put it into a computer system, either one of these answers should be acceptable. Next, I'm going to give you a problem that's out of order. So it's going to look like this. I've got a z squared term, and worse yet, it's got a negative sign in front of it. Then just the constant, and then here's the term with z to the first power. When you factor a polynomial, would you please put it in descending order of the variable before you do anything? So would you put this 9z in the middle and put the 36 on the right-hand side? So let's think of this as a minus, or a negative z squared, minus 9z plus 36. I really dislike negative signs in front of my squared term, so I prefer to factor out a negative 1 out of this problem in order to, to pull off the factoring. It makes it much easier to think of two numbers whose product is this and adds to be something else. So I'm going to take a negative 1 out of this whole problem, and therefore my squared term will be a positive z squared, and this term will become a positive 9z, and that term will become a minus 36. So now I'm looking for, if it's factorable, I don't know if it is, but I'm looking for two numbers that multiply to be a negative 36 and then they have to add to be 9. 
they have to add to be a positive 9. Could you try saying to yourself, if they have to multiply to be a negative number, and they have to add to be a positive number, then my biggest of the two factors, biggest, so let's use 1 times 36, my biggest of my two factors has to be positive for it to add to be positive. So this one would be the negative one. So say next I went to 2 times 18, the 2 would have to be negative. And if I added a negative 2 and 18, I don't think I'd get 9. And then I, I believe 3 goes into 36. I think it goes in there 12 times. Oh, look, I hit it. Um, a negative 3 and a positive 12 does add to be 9. But if I hadn't hit it at that point, I would say to myself, well, I think a 4 goes into 36 9 times. And oh, yeah, a 6 goes into 36 6 times. So those are all my options, but these are the, the pair that works. So over here I put a z minus 3 and a z plus 12, and then I bring down my minus 1, or I just bring down a negative sign. Either way works just fine. Um, next, if I start doing something with the first term, uh, like raising the power um, to something bigger than an x squared term. So I have c to the fourth power plus c to the second power minus 56. That's okay because when I go to factor this into the product of two binomials, I would need a c squared here and a c squared here, and their product would be c to the fourth. And when I put numbers in here and here, and I look at this inside product and the outside product, I call them the smiles sometimes, the inside and the outside, which form this middle term, they're going to be next to c squared, and I want them to add up to have uh, a c squared um, factor in them. I want two numbers that multiply to be 56, negative 56. And the first thing that comes to my mind is 8 times 7 is 56. And 8 and 7 are kind of close together. Their signs have to be opposite. What do they have to add to be? What's in front of this right here? When not written, it's a 1. When not there, 8 and 7. I want them to add to be a positive 1. How about a positive 8 and a minus 7? That adds to be a positive 1. And let's do the foiling here. Let's do the full foiling, not just what I call the smiles. So let's go ahead and take c squared times c squared is c to the fourth. And then here we have a minus 7 c squared. And here we have a positive 8 c squared, and finally a minus 56, and sure enough, those two middle terms do add to be 1 c squared like we have in our middle term, and we've checked this problem to see if it's correct. Let's do uh, another one. Let's put um, a couple of variables in the problem. So let's go with x squared plus 7xy plus 10y squared. Still very simple, very much like everything we've been doing. I've got a 1x squared here, so I'm going to put an x in the front of each of these because their product is x squared. I'm still looking for two numbers that multiply to be 10. Hmm, 5 and 2. Add to be 7. Hmm, 5 and 2. Doesn't matter where we put them. But these two last terms don't multiply to be just 10. They multiply to be 10y squared. So I need to have a y on each of them. So that 5y times 2y would give me that 10y squared. And check out the middle. So this x times x is the x squared. This is part of the middle. I have a 2xy as a product of my outside terms. My inner terms are a 5xy. And then my last term is a 10y squared. And sure enough, those two are like terms and add to be that middle term of a 7xy. This segment was just a few more problems where you had some greatest common factors sometimes. You had some unusual exponents or maybe several batches of variables. But still, factoring trinomials with a coefficient in front of the x squared term was a 1.